Is Tesla Q3 earnings going to be a miss? Or is it gonna be a home run and sheesh, it's gonna be crazy. What's it gonna be? Well, as the curious pigeon that I am, and since I'm going all in into Tesla stock, I got to work. In this video, we look at the EPS for Q3 because last Q, I was literally one cent off. It was absolutely insane. So we're gonna do the same thing in this quarter and let's see how close I get this time, as well as the stock price for Q3 and Q4. So it's gonna be absolutely interesting. So let's get into it. All I ask to turn is a like and subscribe if you haven't already man let's go by the way guys if you want to support this channel even more now you can you guys can now become a member of this channel where you guys will get cool emojis you'll get your crown man your king queen get your crown man and a members only community post which i think is pretty cool and you get all that for only less than two bucks a month so that's a sheesh as well as this merch right now like the go all in wall poster behind me t-shirts sweaters mugs cups you name it it's there link card in the corner or in the description all right now let's get into it all right so here's a chart that i use for my quarterly stock price prediction and eps prediction if you guys have been watching this channel for some time then you guys already know what this chart is if you're a new viewer the chart is straight simple easy to understand in this chart we only take care of the vehicles and fsd only nothing else there is no tesla insurance there's no tesla energy and any other income streams that they have. It's just the FSD and a little bit of FSD, not the full thing, and the vehicles delivered because that's a chunk of Tesla's business at the moment until we have more data on their energy insurance, maybe their robo taxis as well. We can definitely add them in as well, which I think next year this time, there'll be some changes, but uh, we'll wait till then. Let's see what happens. But for now, as you guys can see, we got the vehicles delivered. We got the FSD one-time payment as well. Vehicles with FSD, which is at 15%, although it should be closer to 30%, but we're keeping it conservative at 15%. And then we got the FSD sales and the profit margin, which we lifted at 44% for the entire year of 2022. Average vehicle sold or average selling price per each vehicle for Tesla. Total revenue, Q1 revenue, Q1 at income, the last three quarters, and then all four quarters, including the one that we're going to be working on too so this way we can justify the PE and get the correct or accurate stock price around 80 percent seems to be right if the PE is correct so yeah let's see what's gonna happen in Q3 man if you ready you ready man come on man smash that like button man let's go so in Q3 they did about 344,000 vehicles I think the exact number was 343,830 vehicles so let's put that in and voila as you guys can see all the numbers just pop in like popcorn let's go step by step out of the 344,000 at a one-time fee of $12,000 for the FSC, there was 52 vehicles. Now, obviously, the subscription makes a lot more sense, but we don't have data on how many customers or Tesla users are using it on a monthly basis. We just don't have that data yet. So instead, we just use 15% from the 344,000 to get the 52 vehicles that paid it one time full of 12,000 for FSD one time. I guess in a way it makes sense, but it's not accurate. Although we are keeping it conservative because it only is 15%. Now, moving on to the sales for the FSD, which is around $619 million, and FSD profit margin is $272 million. The average selling price or the average vehicle sold is going to be around $57,000. In Q2, I did say $55,000 or was it $56,000? I'm not too sure. I think it was $55,000. 55, I have $55,000 here. Come on, man. I put here $57,000 because inflation and the prices was high and then we got the EV credits on top of that. So $57,000 I think makes quite a bit of sense. With that, we get a total revenue, total vehicle revenue over $19.5 billion and a Q1 revenue over $20 billion, which is a record, by the way. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. But what's even more insane is the net income of Q1. And man, look at this. 3.9, over $3.9 billion. Like, that's the record. That's, that's, that's record, man, for Tesla. Reaching almost $4 billion in a single quarter. Like, that, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. I mean, look at the full year of 2021. Over $5.5 billion in an entire year. In one quarter, they did almost $4 billion. Like, That's absolutely insane. That means the next quarter, which we'll get to, by the way, in a bit, will most likely do what they did in a full year in 2021. That's absolutely in flip insane. Bruh. But anyways, how I got this $3.9 billion is that I put the margin here, the income margin at 18%, which was pretty much the same in Q1. Although I do think it will be around 20%. I like to keep these conservative and left it at 18%. And then if we add the past three quarters for revenue and net income, we get a full year from Q3 2022 to Q4 of 2021 
around 73, just almost $74 billion and a net income almost reaching $12 billion. Now the shares outstanding, I did say a 1% dilution every single quarter because Tesla has been diluting for some time and they will continue to do so until they do some sort of a buyback or Elon closes Twitter, hopefully faster faster the better man this twitter thing is just a big overhang for tesla but um with all that 3.1 almost reaching 3.2 billion in shares of standing alone now here is the number that i want you guys to keep in mind going into earnings next week or or in a few days whenever it comes out i'm predicting the eps quarterly that's going to come out is going to be 1.24 a dollar 24 bucks which i think the street is saying or the expectation is around one dollar one dollar and five if i'm not mistaken so this is a clear beat this is this is like a mass this, this is going to the moon beat you know what i mean like you're destroying expectation over expectation during a crisis, during a recession, and during a very uncertain time. Bruh, come on. But what's even more crazy is that EPS looking at it an entire fiscal year, like from Q3 all the way to Q4 of 2021, it's around $3.73. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. We'll see what it's going to look like in the entire year of 2022 in just a bit once we finish Q4. But that's insane, dude. $3.73? That deserves a sheesh. Let's find out the stock price by figuring out the PE because that's what investors are willing to pay for for the stock. And in the bear market, it's a different story, but let's see what we can get. So in the PE, I usually said that, and this was a couple months ago or last month, that the PE could be around 80 if the market would be in a much better position. Unfortunately, it's not, it's the same. Um, it hasn't really moved, it hasn't gotten better, but it hasn't gotten worse either. So it's it's still not the same, but it, with an 80 PE, which I don't think is gonna happen anymore unless there's a massive reversal in the market, that'll give us a stock price of literally almost at 300, but I, I highly doubt that. I don't think that's gonna happen. What's most likely going to happen right now, the PE is around 79 or 80. Once the earnings comes out, the PE is gonna continue to shrink because earnings are freaking monstrous so i think the pe might shrink down to 60 with the current market conditions and that's the stock price of 224 i know it doesn't seem to be that encouraging because we're, we're really not that far from the stock price as it is now i mean the stock price is around the 220 210 mark if we're predicting that next year or 2023 the eps is going to be around seven to eight dollars it's just the bargain price to load up on for the next four or five years but let's go ahead and continue to play with this pe a 60 pe i would think this would be the stock price of 224 is going Going to be the range that it's going to be at maybe it'll go down to 200 maybe it'll, it'll go up to 250 but i think the range could be at 224 if market sentiment is still terrible if it's getting better i think a pe of 70 would make sense around 261 and if, if and if the market gets even more better an 80 pe would make a lot more sense around 300 bucks per share but leaving a 60 pe just to keep it safe and conservative but if you want to get more bearish here then we could see a PE of 50, which the price could go down to 187 if the market sentiment is terrible. And a lot of bears and a lot of bear analysts are saying that the price could go down to 180, could go down to 180, not will. But if it does, then the PE needs to be 50 in order for that to happen. Now, Chicken Genius put out a video and you guys are going to make a video off that, but he did say the stock price could go down to 140-ish, which would be which is ridiculous. But reducing the price down to 140, that would mean a PE of around, I think 38, 37.5 looks like it. I mean, guys, come on. You guys really think that Tesla's gonna be at a 37.5 PE to trade at 140 bucks per share. I, I, think, I think even at this point, Warren Buffett's gonna buy some shares because it's just so dirt cheap. Like, bruh, 37, 38 PE and the company's growing 50% yearly. That means Amazon has to be at a 20 PE. Bruh, come on. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's why I'm saying a 60 PE is a good range for Tesla around 224 mark, around $224 per share mark in Q3 from 21st of October all the way to 20th of January of 2023. And again, guys, I'm not saying the stock price will be this. I'm saying it could be this. Personally, I believe a PE of 70 is okay or even PE of 80. I think the stock price should be this, but I think we're probably going to get a price of 224 instead of 300. But let's see what happens. All the prediction. Now let's see in Q4. Now in Q4, we're all expecting the Tesla to deliver some sort of numbers in between the mid 400s. And most likely if there's no shutdowns, lockdowns, you know, stopping for upgrades, most likely it's gonna be around the mid 400s or probably in the high 400s. I put here 460,000 for Q4. And these are the numbers that we get. 
Woo, look at that, pop like popcorn. The only thing is different here is that the FSD has been increased to 15,000 from 12,000 because they are increasing the FSD price one time fee. So in Q4, that's what we get. 69 with FSD, that's quite funny. <laughs> but as you guys can see for the average selling price, I put around 56,000. I brought it down for a thousand because I do believe inflation is gonna cool off. We did peak inflation, that's important. We did peak inflation around like 9%. I think it was back in June, I believe. Now we're slowly coming down. We just hope that October's um, inflation number, which will be showing next month, will be below 8% if it is. And that's really good news. It really is good news. Although we have peaked in inflation, it's just a sign that inflation is slowing down and we are on the downtrend, meaning it's better for the stock market. It really is. But inflation needs to continue to go a lot faster in order for stocks to reverse back to their all time highs because the Fed is going to continue increasing rates and that's not good for the stock market. But anyways, $56,000 per average vehicle sold, which would give us a total revenue of almost $26 billion, a total Q1 revenue almost reaching $27 billion. And look at this net income over $5.8 billion. Dude, in one quarter, you did more than the entire year of 2021 that's absolutely insane dude sheesh that's just absolutely flipping amazing now let's add the other three quarters including this one we get a total revenue of q4 of 2022 over 82.7 billion dollars and a net income over 15.3 billion dollars like dude bruh that's a 3x almost a 3x in total net income from 2021 to 2022 that's absolutely insane the eps for that quarter is a dollar 82 not bad and for the entire year of 2022 eps is 479 almost five that's that's crazy that's insane that's insane bro god <sighs> Okay, moving on to the stock price. With this monstrous, absolutely monstrous, record-breaking quarter, the PE is going to continue to shrink. But if the sentiment and the market is still bad, we can see probably a PE of around 50, which that will give us a stock price of 239, which is really not that appealing, to be honest with you. But most likely in Q4 or sometime the first quarter of 2023, if the bear market has subsided, if investors are becoming now more optimism and this war in Ukraine and Russia kind of calms down a bit and inflation is whole lot lower than than what it is now then i can definitely see a pe of reaching at least 60 around 287 bucks per share most bullish case i can see what's happening in q4 or the entire year of 2022 is an 80 pe which would give us a stock price of 383 and you know we'll hit record prices or back to all-time highs of 1.2 trillion dollars of market cap do i think that's going to happen i really hope so but i don't think that's what's going to happen most likely a 65 PE seems to be correct. And that will give us a stock price of 311. And I think that's gonna be the range, some somewhere in the high 200s and somewhere in the low 300s. Because at this point, it's just value, man. You're, you're, you're entering deep value market. And for Tesla, it's just deep value, man. I mean, come on. You're doing record numbers. You're tripling revenue. You're, you're, tri you're tripling net income. You're taking away everyone's market share. You're taking away everyone's lunch, dinner, and breakfast. You're showing record numbers. You're just going full strong. And by the way, guys, they may announce new gigafactories. They may announce new models. They may announce some other cool thing, other catalysts that can bring the stock price higher and the PE higher. A buyback could also be a very strong catalyst. But a 65 PE, I don't think that's too low in my opinion. I think a 70 PE would make more sense, but let's keep it conservative. A 65 PE of around 311 bucks per share by end year, I think is realistic. Now, unfortunately, the total deliveries in 2022 didn't reach 1.4 million, around 1.369. It's ironic, I know. If they didn't have that shot down in Q2, it would have been well over 1.4, well over, probably reaching almost 1.5. But anyways, um, 2023 is going to be a great year for Tesla, but the delivery is going to reach over 2 million vehicles delivered. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Now, the realistic price ranges for Tesla, 224 to 311. I can see that's going to be the price end year for 2022. If we were in a bull market, man, this is an easy 100 PE stock. Easy. Almost a 500 stock price. Easy. Very easy. But because we're in a bear market and things are just bad, you know, if, the, if this is your first time in a bear market, guys, get ready for some pain. You know, get a belt and get buckled up, man. It's going to be a very rough ride. But it's in these rough rides that later on we do get wealthy if you take the right measures. That's going to be in a whole different video. But hey, welcome to a bear market. It's normal. It's healthy. We kind of need a bear market every now and then because the stock market can't always go up. How the heck are we retail investors going to buy stocks on the cheap? 
just not gonna happen so bear markets really allow us to buy stocks on the cheap good quality stocks that are doing record numbers like tesla on the flipping cheap so don't get so pessimistic this is a good time if you got cash and you've always wanted to invest in tesla on the cheap well you're about to get your chance honestly guys i'm embracing all these low prices man i mean i've been begging for a low price since 2020 because I did capitalize on 2020 and I made a boatload of money in 2020 because it was a V-shaped recovery. But this one is going to be more of a prolonged downside until we get some good news, like solid good news, like inflation, CPI, a little good news of the Ukraine and Russia war. I think once those things get better, we can see a massive reversal in the stock market, especially if they start cutting interest rates. If they do that, that's it. We're going back to the flipping moon. But until then, embrace yourself for some bad bad days probably some days it's unbelievable maybe 180 140 maybe the chicken was right 140 may become true maybe and may not nobody knows this is why it's only a prediction and nothing else and nothing more always take these videos with a grain of salt and do your dd so yeah guys there you have it keep this number in mind one dollar and 24 cents for the eps of q3 let's see if i'm right let's see if i'm wrong i don't know last quarter i was off by one cent it was flipping mad i was just mind boggled i'm like bruh i was that close Let's see if this time I'll be that close or not. Very interesting. But I want to know what your estimation is. Comment down below what your EPS is for Q3 coming up. And let's see who's going to be close. It's going to be very interesting. But we all can agree that it's going to be a record-breaking Q3. There's no doubt about that. I mean, come on. They did record deliveries. Worst comes to worst. Worst comes to worst. The EPS may be below $1.20 or $1.15. But that's still a beat. That's still a massive beat. And it's a record. So, bruh. Come on. Now, if you guys are familiar with Gary Black, I mean, if you guys watch this video, you guys already know who Gary Black is. He's a big Tesla bull. Well, we break down his spreadsheet, his Tesla long-term forecast in this video. So if you guys are confused on his spreadsheet, well, I break it down here and I explain it thorough. And we get the stock price of what he may think will happen from now to 2030. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. You'll find some good value. Check out some merch, man. And don't forget to subscribe. I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.